Hello, this is Paweł Kozioł speaking for the Go for Everyone project. And this is the second part of our installment on extensions that I promised in the previous video. First, let's recapitulate what has been said earlier. Point one, if you extend in the early Fuseki from a corner, then you usually go towards the star point at the side. And this move is perfectly safe as long as you have the possibility of playing another extension. If you do not, you just have to calculate whether it works or not. Because of that, for example, if you play a Chinese Fuseki, this move is perfectly viable because it blocks the way black wants to extend. And if black it extends, he may get into all sort of trouble after some kind of invasion. So typically, if white plays here, then black goes elsewhere. Another thing which I want to explain needs creating an artificial position, so sorry for this ugly move. The basic rule of extending is that you extend by height of the wall plus one. If you consider a single stone a wall, then it is one plus one. And now the correct size of your extension is two spaces. If for some reason you manage to build a two stone wall, then correct size of your extension is the height of the wall plus one, a perfectly good free space extension. If you have a really large wall, then of course you extend far away. If one, two, three, four, five, six stones mean one, two, three, four, five, six, possibly seven. But if we want to go at such a large distance, then it usually begins to matter what happens on the other side of this distance. So suppose that black plays a stupid move. When you extend from a large wall, there is another important consideration. Namely, you want to extend high. If you go low, the opponent will flatten you and the wall will lose much of its potential. I have promised to talk to you about the extensions from the invisible walls or to put it in a more philosophical way about extension as a shape, not as a move. Because you know, usually we think about extending from a stone or from a wall, but oftentimes it happens that you extend first, like here in the Chinese Fuseki, and build a wall only later. So how does it work? Extending first and building a wall later is definitely more flexible strategy but it comes at the cost of sometimes ending up in a slightly unfavorable position. For example, let's consider this structure. One of the possible white invasions is too early for that, but it's another matter, is here. And now black doesn't want to back off because after this white group is safe. So. He plays this Kosumi first, white strengthens his group, black goes here, white builds a group here. Now you see, as an extension, this move is a bit too cramped. We know the rule, from a two stone wall you extend three spaces, which should be here, but this stone of course prevents it, and black, playing this Kosumi, forces white to make this extension which is a bit narrow. It's not a bad move by any means, it's only a slight inconvenience, but allowing white to safeguard this group like this without this short extension would be too easy on the opponent. Now in this position white can also approach from this direction and now it's black's turn to decide what to do. The choice is basically between this move, play it high because this stone is low, and some kind of pincer. And if you know everything I told you about extending from the wall, that if you have a big wall then you want to extend high, then this knowledge dictates you that this move is better. If you play a pincer, you just imagine next white's action. Here, into here, into here. White has territory, black has a wall and an extension from the wall, right? Mm, not necessarily, because white has this move. 
and black group is flat and the world becomes wasted. So before deciding what to play as black you imagine the invisible wall here and then think whether it's good for your position. If the answer is no, you just uh, draw back. Actually, if white thinks about the invisible wall first, then his another idea can be to go straight to the corner. And now black has to decide whether to fix this low position of the stone by playing something or to play a normal joseki somewhere else, risking that white will find a flattening move later. So you see how thinking about extension as a shape, which appears on the board a bit later, but is not present in the initial position, clearly improves your strategical thinking. The third installment of Go For Everyone series is about a Japanese title game between Kyokagen and Shibano Toramoru. And this game gives us many possibilities of talking about walls, extensions and so on. The first thing I want to say is a slight detour, because this move has not been played in the game. Back when I was learning Go, it was said that pincer here is slightly suboptimal, because if black plays here and we play normal sequence, never Hane by the way, then white would like to have a stone number two a bit further to the right. But when white plays here, The complaint was, hello, white, white builds the wall, but where is the extension? Black can steal it. And uh, this was considered not too good result for white. But I have given this position to Katago, and it said it's about equal, showing the sequence like this. So this wall occupies a bit less space than it should. This stone feels uh, slightly too close to the wall, but at the same time, this black group is also a bit cramped, so I guess that's why the result is equal. But let's come back to the game. In the game, a corner invasion has been played, and White decided to block this way, not towards his own stone, which may have allowed building some kind of wall and then extending, but towards the opponent's stone, which already indicates that White wants a sharp game. Black continues like that, and white plays here. Now again I asked Katago about extending, and this is still a good move. A free stone wall, one, two, three, plus one, but we think about this move more like about the opening move when you extend from the corner up to the middle. But white wanted to take a bit more, and that's why he played here. Now if, if black just defends, which is fine by the way, then white can continue here and he gets both an extension and the extension from that extension. So this is still equal, but I understand why, why black thought, no, I cannot allow this. So he invaded right now. Of course it comes at the cost that uh, white gets to approach this corner twice. And now some joseki is played and white plays into the corner ignoring the situation on the bottom of the board for the time being. There are some moves, another wall. And now, after taking some territory in center, white extends. Of course, you may say it's not an ideal extension. One, two, three, the height of the wall, plus one, would mean extending one step more to the right. But as you see, it's not such a good idea because uh, it's a contact play which would result either in a Hane, where black stones are getting progressively stronger and white group is a bit flat, or it would be resu result in a crosscut when there is a fight in which black group should settle comfortably. So because of this, white extends here, avoiding the contact play. Now the interesting thing is that this would be perfectly good move. You cannot make a full extension. So you extend by just one, thinking that whatever happens later, you can jump, you can escape, your group is solid. And this would be 
perfectly good move, much easier to handle than what was played in the game, because in the game black played here. White avoided the contact play and black did it. Why? I guess that uh, black took into account these stones, thinking that they are strong, were not afraid therefore of white making this group stronger, we can attach. White goes up, and black, black goes down, making this group a bit more solid, and you see, because of this stone, black is not really afraid that white will jump and cause him problems. White plays a turn, attacking this group, black defends like this. There was an alternative, playing here, but I guess black avoided it because uh, it settles white group. So we play here, here, and black leaves this group for the time being, playing uh, another Joseki move. Now something unusual happens. There would be a possibility of playing a normal extension here, height of the wall 2 plus 1, so it's perfectly good, but perhaps doing so would result in a situation where black stones are a bit too low. So instead of that, what about this move? Now the relation between these stones is a bit strange and I'm not sure what uh, black would do, for example, after this one. So black decided to do something special. Playing here, playing a stone in the corner with the idea of sacrificing it. Because by doing so, he managed to build a wall of three stones rather than two. The idea being that it would be easier to play on the left side. Now, this might be a good time for extension, but again, white can flatten us here, so black decided to play here. More ambitious move than the usual one, but perhaps after, after this one it would be too easy for white to invade. Here white needs to take care for his group, which gives him a little less time for doing something on the left. Here, here. And here, this is interesting move, because it looks not, not that big, but it's all about the continuations. If white plays somewhere else, then this might be center, and this might be center, which means that black would extend this wall for free. So white plays here, black spends a move to make this group more safe, and white ignores. Now the game becomes really strange and interesting because black ignores too. Black uh, thinks that attacking this group and uh, this sequence also prepared for this will outweigh any loss in court here. By the way, we also see something interesting about what happens with walls. Because this wall now begins to look weak. Later on it will be attacked and uh, black will need to exert some effort in order to save this. Its influence is negated by white stone here. So is it wasted? No, it's not wasted because it allowed black to play a couple moves here and then start harassing this group. It often happens with walls that they gain us some territory, but not exactly in the place where we would expect it. His gains are not located in the proximity of the wall. The alternative strategy would be to play something like this, and this, trying to attack this stone, but it does not look good because we made this uh, group stronger. Okay, the game continues like this. It's a popular re result with this kind of wall that you get some kind of a core. White presses, and there, now there is another fight, which gets really complicated because we have a core and we still have a weak group here. I hope this will be explained by Stanisław Freilag, but uh, even now you see that the game is pretty interesting. So I also look forward to Stanisław's uh, lesson about this game. Thank you very much for listening.